Hey, Walter Sorrell's back with another Knife Makers Friday Five. Today, we're talking Hamones. Recently, I had a student come down to my shop from uh, Michigan. I'm down in uh, in Georgia, and uh, he worked all week with me. Uh, we were working on a, a small Japanese sword called a wakazashi, and we, uh, you know, he was a real hardworking guy, concentrated, really did everything right. At the end of the week, we quenched his blade, and it cracked. So, those of you who have uh, been working with Hamones probably have run into this occasionally. So the thing that struck me as I was watching Russ battle through, uh, you know, the challenge of, of making a hamon on, on this uh, small sword was the, the deal with hamones is that they're just complicated. I wish there was an easy, you know, uh, magic bullet, one, two, three, do this recipe and everything will work perfectly, but it's just not so. So today I'm gonna to talk a little bit about some of the things that you can do to make your hamones work better and just kind of also fill you in on just some of the stuff that you're up against if you do try and take on uh, hamones. For those of you who are not familiar with uh, hamones, hamones are kind of the distinctive feature of Japanese swords. It's a little wiggly line that runs down the blade that marks a, a sort of demarcation between the hardened part of the blade and a softer part of the blade and a lot of custom knife makers are putting them on western style blades now really cool feature if you haven't gotten on the hamon train really uh, worth checking out so by the way a little advertisement for myself if you're really interested in hamones i've got a video that's available on my website waltersorrelsblades.com uh, it's actually the first video that i ever made i had a lot of people contacting me back in the day how do you do your hamones and so i, I did this video for that reason anyway um so let me, let me talk a little bit about some of the factors that are at play when you're doing hamones and, and kind of give you a sense of why there are a lot of difficulties uh, in doing it, but also some of the things that you can uh, adjust to get it right. So first, uh, the thickness of the clay. Uh, hamones are made by laying a clay mixture onto your blade, heating it up, quenching it. That uh, clay acts as a heat sink, slows down the cooling of the uh, steel and keeps it from hardening. So uh, if you make it too thick, um, sometimes that can cause excessive curvature or even cause uh, heat to bleed back into the, uh, the hardened portion of the blade, kind of make your hamon a little fuzzier and just not work as well. So uh, keeping it probably under an eighth of an inch thick is, is a good plan and also taper it a little bit towards the spine. Uh, another point, type of clay. Now, traditionally in Japan, they used uh, sort of complicated clay-like mixtures that included some clay, maybe crushed limestone, ash, a, a bunch of different things. So you're really trying to do two things with the clay. The first is that it has to be an effective heat sink. Um, the second is that it has to stick to the blade. If it cracks and falls off in the middle of your heat treatment process, doesn't do you any good. Um, so I actually use a uh, refractory cement called Satanite, a um, little less complicated than making something yourself. I've tried uh, making, uh, you know, like the Japanese uh, masters do, making a you know, complicated mixture myself. They work fine, but not any better than Satanite. Lots of other materials that will work. Um, refractory cements of various sorts, furnace cement. People have used all kinds of different things. Um, Type of steel, this is really, really crucial. A lot of folks try to use the wrong kinds of steel to make hamones and it's a big failure. Well, what you need is a high carbon steel, 1050, 1095, 1080, uh, W1, W2. Those are the kind of steels that will work. Any steel that has too much chromium, too much manganese, uh, it's just, it's, you're just trying to push a rope up a hill. So some things to stay away from, any kind of stainless steel, forget it. That's just not even uh, in the realm of the possible, really. 
um, at least by you know the normal methods that you would use to, to make a hamon. Um, there are also some fairly common steels, 1084 and 01, uh, 52100, 5160. Those are all pretty cool steels, uh, basically high, you know, basically high carbon steels, but they have either too much chromium or too much uh, manganese to to be ideal for making hamones. You can make them on there, but they're going to be less interesting, less detailed uh, than if you use the more the, the simpler high carbon steels uh, like 1050, 1095, the other ones that I mentioned. 1084 is the the kind of the funny one in that c series. Uh, some uh, high carbon steels like 1084 and sometimes 1065 have a little bit more manganese than most of the other high carbon steels. This kind of screws the pooch on making uh, hamones for them. You can still do it, they're just not as detailed. So one of the most important issues that you're up against when creating hamones is the type of quenchant that you use. Are you quenching into water? Are you quenching into oil? Uh, the steels that work best for uh, hamones are typically steels that are referred to as water hardening steels. In, or, in other words, to harden properly, they have to uh, harden very quickly or they have to be cooled very quickly. Uh, and water is the kind of medium that typically does that uh, most effectively. Problem is, when you quench something super fast, it tends to crack. Um, so uh, there are different ways of kind of ameliorating that. You can um, quench into a fast quench oil like Parks 50. You can do interrupted quenches. Um, you can heat the water that you're uh, quenching into a little bit, and that'll sometimes help. Um, quenching into water and then transferring it very quickly from there into hot oil. Well, that's the technique that I typically use. Um, there are a lot of different ways of doing this, but it's an art. You know, it's just something you're going to have to experiment with. There's just not a perfect recipe for doing it. You know, I was talking about uh, Russ, who came down and studied with me a couple weeks ago. He uh, was standing right there with me. He was doing everything as I was telling him to do it. I was watching him the whole time. And still, you know, somewhere in there, um, what he did was probably just a little bit different from the way that I would have done it. And so you sort of have to practice and, you know, accommodate yourself to the procedures that you use, the materials you use, your shop, your forge, all that sort of thing. You have to, to feel your way through that until you can confidently repeat what you're doing time after time. Uh, another important factor in making hamones is heat. You know, you have to typically heat it in a forge, sometimes in a, in a heat treating oven, they'll both work fine. Uh, but you have to get to a, a particular heat you, you can't heat it too much or it'll tend to crack more easily. Um, it may also harden more than you want. Uh, if you don't harden, if you don't heat it enough, it won't harden at all or the hardened section will be really thin and it won't really follow the clay. Um, you know, there are just a lot of things that can go wrong in terms of the heat. And so you've got to kind of, you know, learn exactly the kind of heat that's going to work for the blades that you make. So I don't want to turn this into a four hour video, but let me just kind of touch on a couple of the other things or mention a couple of the other things that you have to pay attention to. The thickness of the steel, uh, the thicker it is, um, the more heat it's going to retain. And so that's going to change how much clay you need to put on, how you need to lay it out, how you need to heat it and so on. Uh, layout of the clay. Um, there are all kinds of tricky things about laying out the clay that can cause problems if you don't, uh, you know, if you haven't practiced it for a while. Uh, how long you soak, soak the steel in the forge, uh, whether you normalize the steel uh, prior to, um, to uh, quenching, uh, whether you annealed it, you know, they're just endless things that can affect how your hamon comes out. So what's the overall lesson here? You know, people want a, a secret. They want a magic bullet. But knife making is just not a magic bullet uh, undertaking. You have to practice, practice, practice. And, you know, if somebody told you that they were planning to be, learn to be a concert pianist or something like that, um, you know, in a week, you would just think they were an idiot. But uh, people, I think, sometimes come into knife making a little bit naive about the amount of effort that's going to be involved in uh, attaining some level of mastery of the craft. Um, I don't want to say that as a daunting thing. Uh, the, the point about this, and, and maybe this is the good thing, is um, 
it's fun nearly every step of the way. Uh, you're trying to, to climb a mountain here, and if you focus on how far away the top of the mountain is and how great that distance is, um, it's just going to suck and you're going to quit. But if you focus on each day taking a step that's interesting to you, that's fascinating to you, where you feel like you're learning something and accumulating skills, then every day it's fun and the mountain will take care of itself eventually. So, Hamon's great additions to any knife. Uh, when you put a Hamon on a knife, that knife is unique for all time. There will never be another knife like it. And so the attraction to uh, custom makers is, is just undeniable. So I, I highly recommend people give it a whirl. Um, you know, check out the video on my, on my website if you're interested in really diving deep into it. Uh, but it can be a great addition to your um, to your knife making portfolio. Just recognize, gonna take a little while for you to get there. Thanks for watching, guys. If you feel like you got something out of this video, don't forget to subscribe. Also, click on the link to Patreon for a great way to give back to the channel. Plus, check me out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Links in the description. If you want something sharp and pointy, maybe a gift for yourself or one of the cooler people in your life, check out my Tactics Armory website and pick up one of our tactical or outdoor knives. And finally, if you want to learn to make hamons or Japanese swords, check out waltersorrelsblades.com where you can find videos about how I make hamons as well as forging, mounting, polishing, and fittings for Japanese swords. Thanks and see you soon!